Hey everyone, good afternoon to you. It's Mark again, Weather Channel Live. I'm going to give you an update on the hurricane season. Uh, Weather Channel will let you know exactly what we can expect. And I'm going to go into a little more detail because you know how I love my models. And we're going to really inspect and see what's coming our way. I do show that we do have something towards the end of the month because it is ramping up uh, in the MDR. So we will see guys. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate y'all. God bless every single one of you today. Thank you for coming to my channel. Hit that like button. I will I will appreciate it. And make sure you subscribe because this channel is new and we're not going nowhere once again. Amen. All right, let's get to the let's get to the uh, content, guys. This was supposed to be the quiet week weekend where the atmospheric uh, condition over the Atlantic and nearby areas of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico were supposed to be asleep with tropical activity. Instead, we got two tropical storms out there, Kyle and Josephine, none of which are going to impact the United States directly. But this goes to show you that the atmosphere, even in these relatively dormant periods, the atmosphere can still allow tropical development to take place. Let's look at Josephine right now. 45 miles per hour in the wind speed moving toward the west-northwest at about 15 or 16 miles per hour. It looks like most of the bad weather is going to escape to the north of the islands. It doesn't look like much bad weather will move through. Maybe some wind gusts of 30 miles per hour if they get some showers. But overall, nothing we can't handle across parts of the northern Caribbean islands, let's say of Anguilla, Puerto Rico, and certainly everything likely moving east of the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas by a long shot. I mean, it's not even going to be close. And uh, being well off shore of the United States. But uh, interest in Bermuda, keep an eye on Josephine, just in case things get out of hand, even though they're not expected to. Whatever is left over of Josephine will probably make a close run at Bermuda by the middle of the upcoming week. So we'll keep an eye on that, of course. There is other activity, though, in the tropics with a whole lot of stuff going on in the East Pacific, right out in there. What is that all about? Well, the atmosphere is clearly favoring tropical development, or at least storminess in that part of the world, more so than it is on the Atlantic side. And is that sort of condition going to be moving from the Pacific over into the Atlantic and allow even more tropical development to take place as we head toward the end of the month? Probably, but not for the next couple of days. It looks like through midweek next week, most of the storminess, I'm using rainfall accumulation here as a proxy for that, most of the storminess and thereby extension, the tropical development potential, still over here. But going toward, let's say, the end of next week, next weekend, and in the last week of August, it looks like we may be starting to watch a little bit more activity take shape across the MDR, the main development region of the tropical Atlantic. That is something to watch. But also check out what's going on over the Gulf of Mexico. It is also indeed possible that by next week we'll have a trough across parts of that uh, area of the Gulf of Mexico. That would enhance the rainfall, thunderstorm potential, and maybe even increase the possibility of some tropical development in that part of the world. That's a long way out. We don't know for sure, but, it, but it's just something to consider as we go toward next weekend. Now, I like precipitation forecast because if, if you follow the precipitation, you get the exact opposite, which is the best way to see the dry air uh, that is coming, uh, surrounding these waves. It's stopping them, it's choking them, and it's not letting it go nowhere. This is Josephine right here, just so you can tell what the track is that I'm showing you. But as you notice, that the angle of where they most uh, likely travel down here, right about here, you'll see this curve, and one starts uh, building up to something. It starts spinning up, heading in its way towards our gulf. Uh, and it actually shows that it actually does go a little bit into our gulf and becomes something else, but I can't tell quite just yet because it is still too far away. But you can see it right down here below Puerto Rico. It does start spinning up with a lot of precipitation. So we're gonna check the other models and see exactly what is with this as far as winds. Uh, but this is what I show right now. And then it's, if I give it a few more clicks, you can see it does get more powerful as it gets in. I just have no idea yet what to expect from this because this is way far. This is the end of the month, guys. This is still a minute to go. But the reason why, like I said, I love these is because if you notice, there's another one that festers up towards the end of the month, just like Weather Channel says. But thank God, all this dry air looks like it swallows it a little bit. Hopefully it does. But as you see it build up, you'll see all the dry air move in and surround it. It's all the way around it. And if it gets in there, it'll choke it. Uh, but as you move forward, you'll see it does get away. It is rain wrapped. So it kind of has a little bit of, of protection. 
but it's not getting as strong as it could. But it stays together all the way across. So we don't know if it if it gets the stuff back together or not. We'll have to wait and see of that. But that is one big band right there. And that's a lot of dry air. And then we got another one right after it that is trying to become something. So it is active, uh, just like Weather Channel said, towards the end of the month. All right, now if we go on fast forward, we can kind of see a little better of the movement. You can see how it just glides across and is surrounded by dry air. At the 500 millibar level, this is where we follow the storm cells. This is Josephine right here leaving. Uh, this is where we start. We can see the uh, the pressure is all the same, about 16 to 18 thousand feet up in the atmosphere. That way you can see where the storm cells are because everything is 500 millibars. So they're really easy to track storm cells if you look at that height. And as you see, somewhere in the Gulf, some cells uh, form up and become something. We don't know what's going to become of that because it's still too far away. We still got to track it. Uh, as of now, I don't see no great formation going on with this. But it is something we need to keep our eye on, that is for sure. Uh, and then as we look towards the end of the month, when we saw that other uh, thing uh, moving towards us, you can see the cell right here. And it's moving uh, towards the Gulf. And as it gets towards the Gulf, you can see exactly what it does at the 500 millibar level. It looks like it gets a good bit of energy right there as it crosses over uh, Mexico. But when it gets right into the Gulf, I can't really tell what's going to become of this thing. It's just too far away. I do show that there's a lot of whipping going on. And I do show some kind of formation off the East Coast over here. Uh, as far as a, a low pressure, maybe do what Kyle just did. But if you watch it, you see that something forms up right there. And this is at 500 millibar level. This does follow any difference in the air pressure at uh, 15 to 18,000 feet, somewhere up in that area. But something does come across us, and it comes across strong. And when it gets into the east coast, it tries to form up to a low pressure system. So we got to keep our eye on that thing and see what that becomes. Uh, but I do show that bands can whip all the way uh, south. So we got to see what comes of that later. Now this is one of my best ones in my opinion. This is the wind gust. This lets you know what its best potential is. And like you see, this is Josephine. Uh, it is moving itself out. It is getting out of here. But as you see the other models, you can tell, start to see that tropical activity is uh, beating up in the area. And when you look in the Gulf, you will also see that there will be some tropical depression uh, possibility of winds festering up in there uh, we can't tell as far as any formation of any co thing coming yet but there is ready it, the gulf is so ready to get things going all at once is a little bit of food and it will eat uh, and, and at the end of the month you can see the things start festering up down here towards where we saw that the precipitation going in, into the gulf and now i'm showing it could be tropical storm winds it could be stronger it, it could be less uh, we really don't know the answer to that question yet. It's still too far away. But I do show it does dissipate quickly. So we got to wait and see what that is. Because last time uh, when Hurricane Hannah had its little flare up, uh, it flared up pr pretty high. It flared up to a hurricane in that last day. So we got to see what comes on this as the days go by. But this system right here just creates itself from the waters being so warm, so moist, and so ready for action. If you go to the coast of Africa, where a lot of these storms originate from, just like we said on Weather Channel, it is correct that these start to fester up even stronger as the month goes by. The, the red is the 50s, tropical storm, tropical depression is the orange and dark orange. But you'll start to see more and more as the days go by of the red just getting stronger. You even got a peak of a, of a pink right there, which is in the high 50s, almost 60s. And it just shoots off ready to create something. So towards the end of the month, it looks like there's something that we really need to look forward to uh, as far as the season comes. Especially with this big one right here that comes off sometime around the 22nd, 23rd. It builds a lot of energy. Now on the 10 meter winds, 10 meter above sea level, affects you differently of course. It depends where you're, you're at, if your city's above or beyond. Uh, you can see here, you got Josephine leaving. It weakens immediately and gets out of here. Uh, this will show us everything uh, as far as any impacts to the Gulf 
uh, after that point. Now we did see a flare up in the Gulf. And there it is right there. That looks like the strongest point. That little flare up we saw. It does have 30 uh, miles per hour wind, consistent winds with that. Uh, does that have a chance to grow and be something? It does, but it also has a chance to weaken as well. So we don't know yet. And towards the end of the month, when we saw something coming into the Gulf, uh, we actually can see how much power that brings with it. It looks like it has a good spike right about there. And the spike goes all the way up to the low 30s. So there's no telling if that's going to be stronger as well. And right before it hits, it looks like it stays in the low 30s. But I can't tell if this is going to be stronger or, or weaker yet. I can guarantee you it definitely has the chance to be stronger since the Gulf is ready. We just don't know. Now this is your 2 meter temperatures. This is 2 meters above sea level the temperatures that you're going to be feeling and so, so you know the colors you can see the legend on the top it's mostly in the 80s for the for the atlantic it's it's, it's all ready for some action uh but it, you see that the regular orange is the 70s the whites can be in the 90s all the way up to the hundreds it all depends what it is uh, but it didn't bring this to show you the gulf because it shows like the warm stays and it's just a good time for it to fester up uh, you can even see some storms start to twirl up and build in there. Uh, what I brought it for is to show you that there is actually going to be a cool down coming. Uh, it's kind of far away to be to be really precise as in uh, where and when exactly. It shows that the, uh, the northwest gets hit with a pretty cold uh, chill towards the end of the month, which shows also that the Midwest and the Northeast also got some cooler temperatures and cooler mornings coming to you. Uh, now, as I push forward and show you the, the heat and the cold, and the cold, of course, is these lighter colors. Okay, you see the cold pockets, but this is the high mountains. But as you keep going, you can see that it does change in the days to come. Uh, as the cold air tries to move in from Canada, You'll see it does get a couple of times when it does bring in uh, somewhat cool air. This is early in the morning at 3 a.m. But you have 50s, okay, they're going around parts of the country, not bad. Uh, the rest of the country is starting off in the 60s and 70s, and the yellow is going to be in the 50s, so that's pretty nice. But it actually gets a little bit colder uh, for the Midwest and the Northeast, and that's even in the high 40s to the low 50s uh, around there for the next day. But it could be a whole week of this, of some nice cool air in the mornings that really help out uh, get everybody going. Now that one right there, as we take that one forward, you can see that the worst time of that uh, is still in the a.m. So it is going to be some nice a.m. temperatures. Uh, however, it could be colder than what some want. But me, myself, I think that would be a nice change from what we've been having. Uh, it does get a little bit worse. Now let me show you as I go further, you see the northeast actually gets a nice cold spill of 40s. And this is 2 meters from the ground, so this is temperature you will be feeling. So you will be having some beautiful mornings. You will be nice and comfortable with these temperatures. It will help out. Uh, God knows you need it because I know it's been hot. And now you see it comes in again. I don't know if this one right here reaches further in, but as it is, you know, it's in the 40s. If we get the reds, it's in the 30s. But it does leak into the northeast, and you will see colder temperatures coming. There's another one the next morning. So we're talking at least a whole week of some nice, cool temperatures for you guys. Uh, 50s for the Midwest, which is still nice. Way better in the 70s or 80s. <laughs> now, as we go across again, you can see that the intensity gets worse on the west. The northeast stays in the cold. You see the yellows and the blues. You stay in the 40s and 50s. Uh, but the, nor the northwest actually gets a spill towards the end where it actually bleeds in with some really cold temperatures uh, it could vary of course when the time gets closer but your temperatures will be nice and cool and like I said the reds in the 30s so you are looking at some nice cool temperatures coming to you and this is at seven o'clock in the morning and it looked like it got colder as the morning went along it didn't get uh, warmer so it's pretty nice that would be nice temperatures for a change because it has been pretty hot so thank you once again for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. God bless you all. Hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, we, I will stay on the top of the tropics for you and keep us updated. So far, it looks like we got a little bit of a break, so that's a really good thing, especially with everything going on with the flooding and the power outages. Last thing people need is another one. But God bless all of you. Psalms 
59. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. From those rising up against me, may you protect me. Deliver me from the practicers of what is hurtful. And from blood guilty men, save me. For look, they have lain in wait for my soul. Strong ones make an attack upon me. For no revolt on my part, nor any sin on my part, O Jehovah. Though there is no error, they run and get themselves ready. Do rouse yourself at my calling and see. And you, O Jehovah God of armies, are the God of Israel. Do wake up to turn your attention to all the nations. Do not show favor to any hurtful traitors. They keep returning at evening time. They keep barking like a dog and go all around the city. Look, they make a bubbling forth with their mouth. Swords are on their lips. For who is listening? But you yourself, O Jehovah, will laugh at them. You will hold all the nations in derision. O my strength, towards you I will keep watch. For God is my secure height. Amen. The God is, uh, is the God of loving kindness to me will himself confront me. God himself will cause me to look upon my foes. Do not kill them, that my people may not forget. But your vital energy makes them wonder about. And bring them down, O our shield, Jehovah. Amen. For the sin of their mouth, the word of their lips, and may they be caught in their pride, even for the cursing, the deception that they rehearse. Bring them to an end in rage. Bring them to an end that they may not be and may, and may they know that God is ruling in Jacob to, to the ends of the earth. And let them return at evening time. Let them bark like a dog and go all around the city. Let those very ones wander about for something to eat. Let them not be satisfied or stay overnight. But as for me, I shall sing of your strength. And in the morning I shall joyful tell about your love and kindness. For you have proved to be a secure height for me and a place to, to which to flee in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, to you I will make melody. For God is my secure height, the God of love, kindness to, of me. I'm sorry. For God is my secure height, the God of loving kindness to me. To the director on the lily of reminder of David for teaching. When he engaged in a struggle and Jacob proceeded to return and strike down Edom in the Valley of Salt, even 12,000. Oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken through us. You have become incensored. You should restore us. Amen. God bless. Thank you so much, y'all, for watching. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Weather Channel. We appreciate y'all help. Hope y'all have a blessed day today. God bless.